Ladies and gentlemen of this Red Gaming Tentacom video, we have some rumours concerning Nintendo's NX and that AMD could actually be the ones that are producing the processors inside the damn systems. So this actually is a two-part rumour. If we transport ourselves, if we go in our DeLorean back into 2014, actually December 2014, it was mentioned at the Raymond James Financial Technology Conference by AMD's Chief Financial Officer. That's a bit of a mouthful. Anyway, they, he mentioned that the company was getting into two semi-custom chips and one of them was going to be made beyond gaming. And he was basically said that one is a design, one is x86 and the other one is ARM, that, and at least one will be beyond gaming. Many people immediately jumped on the speculation train that it was going to be for Nintendo, but unfortunately there was no clarification. Today, AMD's chief executive, Lisa Su, has confirmed that a third semi-custom chip contract for a project potentially worth billions is now been confirmed so she's saying yes it's being done we're not telling you who it is because you know NDA is up the wazoo but it is indeed confirmed so AMD as we know have x86 as well as ARM and while ARM is definitely a distinct possibility one can't help but feel Puma is a possibility it's a bigger possibility now, Jaguar is in the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. There is a few discrepancies in terms of the clock speed. The PS4 is at 1.6, the Xbox One is 1.75. But essentially, they are the same configuration. Uh, both x86-64 processors, they are both um, two four-core modules. So that's two modules, each with four cores. And each has two processors, two of those processor cores are located strictly for OS functionality, apart from the Xbox One can tap into that if you so desire. But then you're losing Connect functionality and a few other bits and bobs. However, Puma is the successor to Jaguar and has multiple improvements. The biggest is clock speed. And as I did mention, the Xbox One and such PS4 are sh uh, at highest 1.75 gigahertz. Now, to put that into perspective, at 1.5 gigahertz, the Jaguar draws a 15 watt power, uh, is 15 watt. At uh, 2 gigahertz, it hits 25, which is one of the reasons the PS4 and Xbox One weren't hitting that kind of clock speed. Puma hits 2.4 at just 15, uh, 15, watt, uh, 15 watts, and then you can turbo up to 2.2 at just 4.4. That's insane. It is mad. It's just crazy. It's just madness. It also naturally will be rather large improvements in terms of performance. It means that we're going to be able to get better clock speeds. Now, I'm not so much focused on the GPU because the GPU is going to be custom, right? They're not just going to have, you know, 128 cores or something ridiculous. They're going to have a custom processor most likely. And just like the Jaguar, it does support things like SSE, um, MMX and all of the other regular extensions that you would expect. But, as I said, the big one is definitely the improvements in clock. Now, it could also potentially be the Carrizo iPhone L, which is using the Puma Plus core. And there are some differences. It's using a different socket type and still going to be utilizing GCN engine. Slightly different memory. It's um, slight improvements in terms of performance. But, essentially... It could be potentially the same type of uh, situation. But let's assume the system, just for a moment, is going to be released 2000 and, uh, 2016, late 2016. It would make sense that the GPU and CPU performance could be a leap above what the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One is capable of. Now, HBM immediately becomes a potential. The reason, because at that point, HBM2 in particular should become a factor. HBM1 is definitely going to be a standard at that point. You know, it's not like we've got limited quantities at the moment. I mean, there are problems manufacturing it, but you can still get decent quantities-ish. But by next year, HBM2, the quantity is going to be fairly limited-ish from what we're hearing, which is one of the reasons that NVIDIA are actually in a bit of problems at the moment with their uh, next generation Pascal architecture because Pascal supposedly is going to be using HBM2, at least that's what NVIDIA is saying it's going to use, but reports are surfacing that, um, yeah, 
they're not going to be getting the chips early. The reason is because AMD helped to produce the standard of HPM2, and so what what's going on essentially is that they are getting priority in HPM2 uh, chips shipments next year. So that could delay things a little bit for NVIDIA. It's also a good sign that potentially we won't be seeing HBM2 for a console. More to the point, does the system need, does the, you know, does, does the NX need one terabyte per second memory bandwidth? Probably not. Let's even assume the system has 2.5, 2.6 teflops of computing performance, which isn't really that much, to be totally honest with you, at this point. It, while the PlayStation 4 hits about 1.84, that's peak of course, it's not a lot now. You know, we're getting GPUs already that are like 5, 6, 7, 8 TFLOPs, and yes, of course, we are talking like the, the upper echelons of performance like the Furies. But even so, the Fury X has 4,096 shaders, the PS4 has 1,152, so it wouldn't really require that much for, the, for AMD to say, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and work with Nintendo and put in, let's say, you know, 15, 1600, 1700 shaders, which would still be pretty good. It does really dictate, however, how much Nintendo can get out in terms of the price versus performance. Obviously, they don't want a system which is going to require a nuclear furnace to be able to power it, and neither do they want a system which is prohibitively expensive for the majority of their market. And knowing Nintendo, just with the designs they've had recently, they're probably going to want something that's fairly sleek as well. The PlayStation 4 is probably about the size that I would imagine Nintendo would want, but then again, I'm basing that off of not much other than just theory and, you know, speculation. For all we know, we're going to have a system that's the size of a table from Nintendo. We honestly just don't know. The reason I wouldn't... The reason I wouldn't be surprised Nintendo went for power is because they've got a lot of flack recently from developers that, you know, the Wii U just isn't powerful enough. And it, it to release the system in 2016 or 2017 or whenever, whenever the system finally reaches that store shelves, if it wasn't at least, let's say, 30% faster than the PlayStation 4, I think people would be a little... Hype. I think people would be criticising Nintendo. I think they would say, well, what the hell, man? It's like, you know... My cell phone's got more power than this, and to be totally honest, you wouldn't really be that far off. Nintendo also do have a good working relationship with AMD. The GameCube, which technically when the GameCube was coming into fruition, it was technically ATI, but they kept on with them since. And so you've had the GameCube and the Wii and the Wii U all staying with variants of the uh, AMD slash ATI slash whatever GPUs. So AMD do not so AMD and Nintendo do have a good working relationship. Nintendo know, you know, that AMD are gonna supply them with the goods, they don't have to worry. It wasn't like speculation like previously, where for example with the Xbox 360, um, Microsoft Microsoft went with uh, with AMD. The generation previous to that, they went with NVIDIA. However, supposedly there was a little bit of a scuffle between Microsoft and uh, NVIDIA regarding the pricing issues of the chips. I don't know too much about that. I've not done too much research, so you might want to check it out. It could also be that we could see true audio implemented into um, the Wii. Well, sorry, the Wii successor. Because remember, on a very simple scale, True audio is just another set of processors, so it could also save Nintendo a lot of work and a lot less customization. Effectively speaking, AMD do have a lot of technology, and it would also make sense because we do know that Mantle is still in development, um, despite reports to the contrary. I actually had to correct my own article because people were reporting that Mantle's dead, but AMD is saying it's not. So maybe Mantle was, well, even turn into a console-based API. That could definitely be a positive. And from the development point of view, I have to say that if I were working in Electronic Arts, if I were working in, you know, Ubisoft, or if I were working in any studio, and I was thought to myself, hmm, you know what? I'm actually liking the sound of this console. They could easily put together a really decent system which is using DDR4 for the sake of argument with a decent RAM pool, a fast memory, GDDR5, or they could just go with GDDR5 for the whole thing very easily. 
176 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth could be pissed basically to achieve. They could go with a slightly wider bus, 384. It does increase the complexity, however, and also potentially the size of the routing of the PCB. So maybe they'll go 256, but with slightly faster memory. That's also a possibility. They could use like 6, uh, six gigahertz memory, which is potentially possible because prices are coming down now on a GDDR5. Or they could use DDR4 with a smaller amount of HBM1. That's also potentially possible. And then have a decent bus with DDR4. You know, I, I could potentially see something along those lines. Or maybe they'll have, you know, use, for example, one gigabyte of HBM1 for the GPU, which is more than enough for like frame buffer and all of that jazz. And then implement that with like a good amount of DDR4 so it's a bit like the Xbox One setup as now with the ESRAM DDR3 but obviously you've got DDR4 which is a lot faster than DDR3 and then you've got uh, HPM1 which is just just ridiculously fast but all in all it does depend on what Nintendo slash uh, AMD can kind of arrange based on what this release schedule is for the hardware because obviously if the PS4 was released like you know two years later it would have much different technology to what it does now it's just how things work anyway let me know your thoughts on this one I are curious anyway I'm gonna get going hopefully you've enjoyed the video take care bye for now